How's it going everybody, KG here. Today we're going to be checking out the LG QNED 90T. This is LG's best 4K LED TV offering in 2024. This TV is a 120Hz panel equipped with 4 HDMI 2.1 ports, all supporting 4K 120Hz gaming, and of course it also has an EARC port for your audio setups. Now within the LG LED TV offerings, this model is a step up from the QNED 85T, which is an edgelit 120Hz TV. It's a significant jump from that model in both brightness and backlight technology. Now, first things first, when you're running the setup process, I have to say it's a breeze. It's probably the fastest TV to set up of all the brands, in my opinion. LG really needs to be praised for this because sometimes setup processes are way too long on TVs. After setting up the TV, you're going to be in an auto power eco mode and you're going to want to switch out of this if you don't want the TV to control your brightness. So that's definitely going to be the first thing you want to do is navigate to that setting. Now before we get into the picture quality, I do want to talk about the menus and the UI because I think that LG really needs to be praised for it. They knocked it out of the park last year with this and this year they're making more improvements as well. So last year they did the quick menu which I think is a great menu system. It's intuitive and very easy to work with. So again, I just really wanted to praise them on that because you can see the care that they're putting into UI and that's something that's very nice. Personally, I really wish they put the same care into the controller design because it is time for a new update when it comes down to that controller. It is a very dated controller and it hasn't changed for years. Now this year they did add some AI assistants as well as an AI chatbot and they will recommend you settings that people have commonly used. And this is something that I really see new users benefiting from, to be honest with you. So I really do like that they added that feature. If you find it annoying, you can have it disabled under the AI settings. But I really do think that it's cool that manufacturers are using AI in multiple different ways. I thought this was a great feature when I saw it at CES and I really wanted to bring it up in this review as well. One of the things you'll notice when you first boot up the TV is going to be that WebOS system is redesigned once again and they are constantly redesigning this so i do like that and they are promising updates every year so that is nice as well they do have a lot of the popular apps on the app store as well so a lot of people that buy this tv will be really happy with the smart tv experience it's really easy to get in and out of apps i will say they load a little bit slower than my liking but it's like that with pretty much every smart tv system so they don't really lose points there. As far as the sound quality goes for the speaker system, it's pretty okay. It's not bad. You can get away with it. I would say that most people are definitely going to want to add an external sound system to this TV, but you could probably get away with not having a external sound system if you don't care about sound all that much. You could use AI Sound Pro and it can sound pretty decent, but I definitely wouldn't call it a strength of this TV. Now let's get into picture quality and I'm going to have kind of an ending on this topic where a lot of people might feel like it's not fair but it definitely is fair and I'll explain that in just a little bit. Now I'm not going to get into settings in this video but one setting that I did turn on was the real cinema and this was something that does affect your motion so the motion performance of this TV while I had that on was pretty good. I didn't have any complaints at all. This was a setting that seemed to work most of the time for me. Nothing was jarring about the setting. Nothing threw me off about the setting. It is definitely something we got to test more in depth when it comes down to the full review. But for the first impressions with this setting on, it is something that I would probably keep on with this TV, but your mileage definitely may vary as motion, in my opinion, is a very subjective thing and everybody likes a different thing when it comes down to motion. All right, let's talk about viewing angles. Viewing angles are one of those things where when you are looking at an LED TV, it's really going to depend on what type of panel it's using. But <laughs> viewing angles, to be honest with you, on many LED TVs, in my experience, haven't been that amazing because there is off angle blooming. I'll get into that in just a second, but let's start first with what type of panel it is. It is going to be a VA panel for the 65 inch size in the US most likely because that is exactly the panel that I got. And you can see that backed up by the images here. Now, whether or not this is a good thing or a bad thing depends on the type of person you are. I personally think that there's a lot of benefits to both VA and ADS, and there's also some weaknesses to both as well. So 
it's a pick your poison type thing because the weaknesses can sometimes kill the actual panel performance. For example, if you are somebody who wants to watch off angle, you're not going to have a great experience already with the mini LED TV, but you also are going to have to deal with a color drop off as well. And they're going to sometimes have to put an extra layer on this to alleviate that, which is also going to mess with the clarity of your picture overall too. So VA panel isn't always the best thing to use when it comes down to an LED TV for that reason. Now, when it comes down to the ADS panel, that's going to lack a little bit of contrast in comparison to the VA panel, but it's not as much as people think. When you have them side by side, they are quite comparable and the backlight technology is going to carry the panel's weaknesses for the most part. But there is also one thing that ADS does better than VA and that is going to be the color reproduction. From what I have seen, I think that you are getting better color out of the ADS panels. That's just something that I have personally observed when they were side by side. Why am I bringing up ADS versus VA other than the fact that they used ADS in the past? Well, this is because Samsung uses ADS in their QN85C, and I think that maybe they'll use it in the QN85D. I don't know. I haven't seen the QN85D, but it wouldn't be a shock if that was the case. And why am I bringing up the QN85D? Well, the QN85C launched at the same exact price as this TV right here. So I would expect the QN85D to be a match for price in terms of the LG Mini LED QNED 90T. That's what you're looking at as the competitor. But if you wanted to look at it as comparing it to the QN90C of last year, that also used an ADS panel in most sizes. You know, you could judge it in comparison to that. However, I do think that the QN90C is brighter than this TV. So I know that's not really a definitive answer to that question. So we have to put this TV side by side next to the QN85D if we get a chance to. Now, to be honest with you, you know, you are going to have to also look at this TV compared to an OLED TV if you really just want to do yourself the best service possible because it is not stacking up against an OLED TV for the most part in so many different areas. Contrast definitely being the number one. And I actually have a QD OLED in the same room as this TV right now. So I can tell you for a fact that the QD OLED TV is brighter than this TV on most occasions. There is specific scenes where the QNED 90T will be brighter than a QD OLED, but it is definitely few and far between. All right, so I know you guys are probably wondering about blooming. It's one of the more commonly asked questions when it comes down to an LED TV. And when it comes to a mini LED TV, like I mentioned, there is that off angle blooming. That's just inherent to what mini LED is. I don't know why, but that's just what I see. When it comes down to seeing it straight on, the blooming performance of this TV, it's not bad. You know, I don't see a ton of blooming all the time. It is still noticeable. There is not a mini LED TV on the market that is going to alleviate blooming. So that's just a common disadvantage with the technology. So you can definitely get rid of more blooming by using a higher local dimming setting on this TV. That's pretty common with most LED TVs. But I have found that I really like how this TV performs in the medium setting and also the low setting. Which for me, when it comes down to HDR, it's rare to find a low setting for local dimming that I would actually like. But I seem to get more impact for whatever reason with the low local dimming setting. It's kind of odd for me, but that's what I would do if I use this TV. I would try it on low, and if you see some blooming, then use medium or high. Alright, on the topic of blooming and local dimming, let's talk about game mode because game mode is something where you would usually see a manufacturer do something to the local dimming performance and maybe that's going on here but it's not entirely noticeable with LG and their game mode so that's a really good thing and I think that's a plus for LG for sure. I've seen this before in mini LED TVs where the tracking of like the local dimming just seems a little off like things are lagging behind a little bit. I get that with this TV, but it's not as bad as some of the examples I've seen in the past. So I'll give them a pass there. I don't think it's too bad. And the fact that the local dimming actually works in game mode is a really good thing. All right. So should you buy the QNED 90T? 
I think that just really depends on a few things. You have to be completely out on OLED TV, in my opinion, because you're going to lose so much contrast choosing a mini LED TV over an OLED TV. But like I mentioned, there's definitely some things to love about this TV. I just don't know that I can fully recommend it over an OLED TV. But for those of you that are completely out on OLED TVs, I do recommend this TV. I think it's a good TV overall. There's not a lot of huge complaints with this TV. I love the motion on this TV. I like the gaming on this TV. And the overall HDR performance of this TV is good as well. Not to mention the smart TV features are really good and the settings options. And I think that there's a lot of control that you have over your settings in these LG TVs. So that's something that is a plus side as well. All right, let me know what you think. Are you going to get the QNED 90T? Are you going to consider it at all? Tell me in the comments below. And if you want to see more videos on 2024 TVs, I think you're going to like this video right here. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.